Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and our guests. I take my speeches that I do at Toastmasters or the John Maxwell Speakers Club and I post them on social media. And this last Tuesday, I gave a patriotic speech about Francis Scott Key coming up with the words for the Star Spangled Banner. And I got a response from my high school principal, Pete Moore. He said if he was still working, that he would invite me to his school to give an inspirational speech. Well, I'm going to tell you what I would tell them. <laughs> Pete Moore was my principal from 7th grade to 11th grade. And we kind of had a contentious relationship at first. I grew up in northern Michigan, and after school one day, and there was like three feet of brand new snow on the ground, and I got into a snowball fight with a bunch of high school seniors, and he comes out, it was after hours, but he goes, all right, everybody, a thousand sentences, I will not throw snowballs on school property. And I'm like, I'm not doing it, and I didn't. And I got to paddle every day for two weeks, because I didn't, I didn't do it and I wasn't going to do it. The only way I did it, my stepfather was a hog farmer and him and my sister were going to go to the Hog Farmer, Far Farmers Convention in Des Moines, Iowa. And he told me that if I finished them sentences, that he'd take me. I stayed up all night and I did those sentences, sentences and he reneged. <laughs> and I came, I got called to the principal's office, going to go through the ritual. And instead of getting the paddle, I turned in those sentences. And the only time I cried was that day. The, uh, then we moved schools. We got a brand new building. And we got a handbook on how to, how to function in the new school. And the rules were before the first bell, you had to stay in the locker area. And it was a nice spring day. He comes down the hallway. And I always got there early because my mom was a teacher. And he goes, everybody outside. Now, we were reading... 1984 and Animal Farm, George Orwell's books in English class, and had an influence on me. And I said, Why? He goes, New rule. I go, Dirty dictator? <laughs> He's like, What did you call me? I called you a dictator. He grabs me by the arm, takes me to the outside, he goes, Get up there. He calls my mother in. I'm sitting in the front, and I hear them arguing, and finally she goes, I'm not the one that called you a dictator. And the secretary, she looked up like that. <laughs> and we went through the manual, and sure enough, he, I was right, and he apologized. And um, that wasn't the first time. You know, I, I used to joke around that I had an assigned seat in the principal's office. <laughs> and uh, there was one time, there's one other kid that got the paddle more than I did, and we both got in trouble, and we also got the, the teacher's pet in trouble. And so we're in there, and me and Kurt are joking around, and David, was, his face was like white as a sheet. He was scared. I go, mean, Dave, have you ever had the paddle before? And he's like, no. I go, it's about three feet long. It's like a canoe paddle. And he holds it with both hands. And then Kurt chimes in and goes, and when it goes through the air, it makes this whistling sound. And right before it hits you, it catches on fire. <laughs> David was about to pass out. We get in the principal's office. Pete looks at David and goes, what are you doing in here? Get out there and don't come back in here again. And that was it. And then me and Kurt had to take the position and get, get the punishment, right? I, I was a boxer. I started boxing when I was about 14. And um, Ernie Shavers and Marvin Hedge were popular fighters, and they were bald-headed, and I didn't have a girlfriend. So I had the girl from Cosmic Cosmic come to my house and shave my head bald with a razor. There was more hair in the palm of my hand than it was on my head. And I was taking driver's ed, and I wore this, this fishing hat. It looked like a desert camping floppy hat. And he comes by and I'm outside and everything. He snatched my hat off and I got a nice snatch it back. And, and uh, you know, I was upset. And uh, he calls my mom and goes, why'd you let him do that? It's his head. And then I, I wasn't a good boy. I, I liked to fight. And I used to get paid by some kids to fight guys that they didn't like. And I got in trouble for that one time, and, and he calls me in the office, and, and he took a whole different take on it with me. He goes, you're, you're starting to fill out, and, you know, I see you're getting in, you know, better shape. And, you know, you might want to, like, mentor some of these younger kids who may want to be athletes. And 
it totally changed me. I started looking out, so I had a certain group of boys that I would look out for. Pete, without knowing it, got me ready to be trained by Roy Jones Sr. in boxing. Roy Sr. had a piece of PVC by about that long, and if you didn't jump rope as fast as you could every second of every round, sprint all out when you were doing your sprints, throw, throw the air with punches when you're shadow boxing, or you know, every second on the heavy bag when you're in heavy bag, you got a piece of that stick. And I used to joke around that you either got faster, you got tougher, or I got tougher. <laughs> and when I went in the SEAL teams, there was a lot of guys like Pete in the SEAL teams. They were they were defined. This was the expectation, right? And you either meet it or there were severe consequences. And I was really good at anticipating what they would want and making sure it, it was always a treat when they would tell me to do something I haven't done already. For the advice I would give to students that were like me in school, you find those hard guys those leaders that are very demanding and very rigid, and you figure out what it takes to please them. And just expose yourself to them as much as you can, because what's gonna happen is they're gonna figure you out too, and they're gonna figure out what you need to do, not to beat you, but for you to be successful, because that is how they get judged. Thank you, Mr. President.